In today's episode of Let's Code with Friends, we will be solving Let's Code 30, substring with concatenation of all words. This problem falls under the sliding window approach, so we would all be using sliding window in different ways that works for us. Let's get started with understanding the question. You are given a string S and an array of strings words. All the strings of words are of the same length. A concatenated string is a string that exactly contains all the strings of any permutation of words concatenated. For example, if words equals A, B, C, D, and E, F, then there is a bunch of strings that have the permutations of this concatenation. And then it says A, C, D, B, E, F is not a concatenated concatenated string because it is not the concatenation of any permutation of words meaning a c b e f there's no way you can construct it by combining all the items in the array words return an array of the starting indices of all concatenated substrings in s you can return the answer in any order example one input s is bar full the full bar man and then the words are full and bar the output or the answer is zero and nine. The explanation is that for bar full, the substring starts at zero because it is the concatenation of bar and full, which is the permutation of the words. And the same thing applies for full bar the other way, full and bar. And then for example two, you have word good 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 best word. In the words you have word good best word, but there is no output because there is no concatenated substring. Example three, same thing similar to the full bar. Yeah. So that is the question. This is a had one and I'm curious how much time is going to take each and every one of us but with that out of the way let us begin in three two one The ones that is not solving, I know it's an optimization problem because of. Uh, is it time limit? Yeah, time limit. Oh, you always start from the left. In the right direction. <laughs> Let's press submit. Bro! What do you think? Ah, seven six. Bro, seven what, six. What do you mean? Let's try again. Let's try again. To press submit again. Bro, what? <laughs> One more time. <laughs> submit. All my cases are passing. Please just. Ah, Mario. Oh, you passed. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Let's see. Okay, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah. <laughs> Look at how many times. <laughs> <laughs> two seconds. Well, it brought me from two seconds to one second. So I first get the length of the word and then I get the substring length to expect. So this is going to be the length of the word multiplied by how many words we have. So we know how long the permutation should be for the substring. I actually just added this just now from John's idea because it allows me to have this nice optimization which I have here but i'll come to that so when i get the substring length then i have this word occurrence and the reason why i created this is so that i can know if a particular word occurs more than once my previous solution i just assumed that the words in the words array appeared only once but then i had to create this map so that i can keep track of a particular word that may occur one or two times so then i have this word occurrence which can have for example full two times bar one time so then i know that i have three permutation sorry three combinations then i have this visited index 
axis which i didn't use anymore actually i don't need this line anymore so i have this permutation indices which is what i return at the end of the array when i have added the indices i care about so for my window i create a for loop for the left side of the window and then i am moving the right side of the window as needed when i have my left index as zero i have my expected right index which is going to be the substring length plus the left index minus one this minus one is important because doing just this is going to give me an extra character that i'm not interested in so i subtract one so if the expected right index is greater than the last index of the string then i just break like there is no point in finding if the substring matches then here i keep track of my visited words which i just create a map from this word occurrence and so as i visit each word I would be updating the occurrence like if i visit foo if foo had an occurrence of two then it goes to one if it had one it goes to zero then i also keep this array so that i can know i want to know later on if i have found all the words that i need in that substring i think there is a way i can do it with this map but i thought it would be longer so i just created another array where i can keep track of every word that i visit and then i start my right index to be from the left index position so here i now check that as long as the right index is less than the length of the string then i keep moving the right and this is where i move the right so i move it by the length of the word so i start at a specific position for example in this string i could start at this position mm -hmm. then since my array each word is four lengths so i start here and i'm going to be moving four four and i'm just moving by four until i get to the end of the string in every loop i get the word which is the substring where i have the right index and the right index plus the length of the word then i can check the word exists count from my map so if i have not visited the word before then it's going to be zero if the word doesn't even exist in the first place it's going to be undefined so i check if the word exists count is undefined that means the word is not part of my words array or i check if the word exists count is zero it means i have already um, exhausted the occurrence or if the words array i feel like i don't even need this part anymore because this already accounts for if the word exists but here i just check if the word is included in the words array then i break out of the while loop i don't need to continue further then i can just go to the next left index but if all of this doesn't match then i come here where i set the visited words i set the occurrence to be minus one so if it was two before now i know i'm only looking for one occurrence of that particular word and then here i push the word into the visited words array so the reason why i have this visited words array so that later on i can check the visited words array dot length is it equal to the words dot length then that way i know that every word in this array has been used then i'm going to add the left index to the palm indices and if that's not the case like i said i increase the right index so i increase it until i get to this point so i'm actually hoping to get to this point or this point where i break out of the while loop and then my left index would continue to one to two to three of course the closer it gets to the end then this if block is going to hit which will tell me you're already getting to the end of the array you cannot find this particular substring anymore and yeah that uh that's about it i feel like there are more optimizations i can add but this is as best as it's time to sleep this is as best as i could get question yeah so what increases your left index my left index increases once i break from this while loop where is it in my for loop here okay it's the for loop so once and this it increases by one yeah it increases by one because from what i saw you your substring can start from here it can start from literally any point so i have to increase by one so at what point does it know when it has found the substring it knows when i've found the substring mm -hmm. at this point here once the the words i have visited i, I cannot check the okay I see. This again. but once the words are visited mm -hmm. is equal to the words in the array then i know yeah. i found the substring the way my solution actually works i think first i can talk about the beginning part where i have this early return so essentially what what I'm doing here is if you take a look at the way the question is explained yeah. um, and the examples, if we have a case where the substrings that we can generate, if the length of that substring is longer than the length of S that we're given, yeah. then there's actually no need for us to run an application so we can have an early return. Yeah. So an example is, let's say the words you are given, you can generate a substring of, because 
every word in the list of words is the same length. Yeah. So you can essentially calculate what the length of your substring would be. And let's say the length of the substring is six, but the length of S is four. That means you'd never find that substring yeah. Yeah. and you can early return early. The way I decided to approach my solution was I have uh, an S where I want to check for like words or like you know, the the substrings that are formed from the permutations of words. So what I'm doing is I want to generate those list of words that I can find first. Yeah. So I call that a dictionary and I'm putting it in a set. And I'm using a set because I only need a word once. I don't need it multiple times. Yeah. Wait, so you actually yeah. get all your permutations? Yeah, I get my permutations first. Let me find it. So and that's why you're running into the time. Yeah, this is, this is actually where the uh, stuff is coming from. Where did you use yeah. sliding window? So sliding, I will explain that. In order to generate the permutations, I'm using a technique called backtracking. So backtracking, you essentially take each point, let's say you have an array, you take each item um, from the uh, array, and then you take the rest of the array and try to like combine it with it. Let's say you have, you have A, B, C, and then you take A as a point, B as a point and C as a point. Yeah. You can only combine A with what B and C. Yeah. You can only combine B with what uh, A and C. And okay. you can combine C with A and B. But I also realized that doing that, there might be a lot of unnecessary work I'm doing. Yeah. So for example, I'm checking that if at any point, any substring that I've generated is actually not in S, yeah. then there's no need to continue. So I am returning. So for example, yeah. if yeah. there's one word yeah. Yeah. that does not exist in so in the in wait, s wait. then i return then another thing i'm doing is if at some point the substring i get i want to check if i still have like i've not finished generating that substring yeah but it's already at the edge of s yeah then there's actually no need to continue mm. because it will surpass yeah, will. s if i continue so i also return at that point then I feel like that's really what's eating the time here yeah most this is actually where like uh, I know the uh, it's kind of slow here. Mm -hmm. Yes, another thing I'm doing here now is there's a test case where let's say you have multiple letters in your list of words. That means you are most likely to generate the same substring twice. Yeah. But I don't want to do that essentially. Yeah. So I actually have a different map where I'm checking the substring I have seen. Yeah. And if I've seen that substring before, then at that point I no longer generate from there. And then I add that substring to the list of substring I've seen. I then check if I have more words left in my so in backtracking, you essentially have the list of items in the you can kind of see that as a like three data structure. Yeah. Where the amount of um, the letters you have left that you can combine with a node. So if at that point there's nothing else left to combine, you've essentially generated the substring or the yeah. permutation. Yeah. Then at that point I add it to my dictionary. Yeah. But if I've not, then I try to generate the rest of the substring before they get added to the dictionary. This is not a recursive yeah, it's recursive. Bro. Yeah, so it keeps breaking it down. Yeah, I can imagine that for yeah. this input, the recursive will be mad. Yeah, it will actually be quite large. Essentially, then I do that. I start with um, my list of words, and the very first node is an empty string. Yeah. And then I do backtrack. Mm. Then this is where I'm using a, a window. I'm a window. So if you look... This is really a window. Yeah. Yeah, it is a window. Because they are they are moving one by one. They are moving one by one, but it's a sliding. So it's a sliding window because I'm starting my back pointer from zero, and I'm I'm starting my front pointer from the maximum length of a sum string or the or yeah, the length of a sum string. It's not really a window because it's they are the, moving at the same window. size. Yeah. It's, it's a, no, it's a it's, it's a not window. Sliding. It's just closing. It's not it's closing. Not even closing. It's just moving. It's not closing. It's moving. Yeah, it's a sliding window. So what I'm even saying is that. I can explain that actually. I mean, it's a sliding window yeah. technically, but yeah. you don't need more than one. You only need one pointer. I've got into the end. Yeah, with the fixed length. Yeah. Essentially, I have a window of uh, yeah. the length of the substring yeah. that just moves at that fixed length. And if at any point is the word that I find there is in my dictionary, yeah, then I just add the back pointer. Yeah. To yeah. my result. Basically, you are you are looping through everything and checking your dictionary. That means your dictionary yeah. is like big. I, I have yeah yeah it's like. Huge. Is this what you call yeah. a brute force solution? No. This is actually a brute force. Is it brute force? You built the entire dictionary mm. and you looked. You just your check. Ah, yeah. uh, true. Well, that was it for episode two. In episode three, we'll try to pick something less hard. <laughs>
<laughs> or we'll pick something harder. Who knows? But anyways, see you in episode three. And I hope that you are enjoying this series. Bye. <laughs>